This is Dr. David Shine, and welcome to Business Law 101. Uh, one of the things is, is that uh, there's a perception that white collar crimes don't cause physical injury to people. So they've taken on a separate term called white collar crime. In fact, there was a uh, TV show on uh, cable called White Collar that specifically talked about uh, these, you know, they were a bunch of con, con men and con women and uh, they did all sorts of weird stuff. So it was called White Collar. And, uh, but it's usually embezzlement or fraud or criminal crimes. It says there's an increasing prevalence of white collar crime. I don't know that the prevalence has increased so much as w with our very well-developed computer systems and things like that, that we are uh, having more I incidences of um, discovery and also that our society is, is being more aggressive about enforcement. I don't think there's actually more crime today than there used to be. So in addition to criminal charges, many cases uh, have civil lawsuits as well. And I'm actually working on some articles. I have two articles in works right now uh, that deal with some of the criminal prosecutions that we're talking about here. So uh, one of the things is, is that uh, uh, sometimes people are prosecuted under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, also known as RICO. So RICO was developed to give the federal government, <clears throat> excuse me, tools to go after the mob, go after the gangsters who run uh, prostitution rings and drug rings and stuff like that. However, it's in its later days has been used <clears throat> to go after any conspiracy to commit a crime, and that can be a civil uh, type of violation or a white collar type of violation. It doesn't have to be something typically mob related. 